Well, welcome back to my garage. Here's my progress on the bike so far. We got some seals done and we just got the back tire done. As you can see, it's a lot cleaner. Looks a lot prettier. Before I put everything back on, I used some of the steel wool. <laughs> Cleaned it up a little. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh yeah, I still got I still got these clamp bolts here that are ordered and they're on their way in the mail. So not completely done with the back yet, but we're gonna take it off the jack. We got the axle nut tightened a little bit so it can hold a little bit of weight. And the next thing that I'm gonna have to figure out is how to get the front uh, wheel up into the air so we can pop it out. Um, it has to go up kind of high just to get this axle here to to clear the the fork see how it's kind of recessed for that round part I can't even put my fingers in the right spot because I'm looking at the camera backwards so once you undo these little 14 mils up here you take this top clamp off you can lift the bike up a little bit and then the front wheel will just let me break my arm and come that way. Uh, you have to get it kind of high though because it does, let's see if I can see this. If you look, the caliper and the rotor are kind of all snuggy with each other. So we got to get the bike up high enough that it takes that rotor. Where the heck's my finger? There it is. So that rotor will go up, or I'm sorry, the caliper will go up off of the rotor clearing it. So we got to figure out some sort of a ghetto rig situation for the jacks and see if we can't make that happen. We got my little buddy here with me today. What are you doing over there? Making some bullets for this gun out of mm. batteries. Making some bullets for his gun out of batteries. So we'll figure out what kind of a jack situation we can get set up that'll hopefully not kill us and then we'll put that on film here in a sec. All right, so we figured out that if we take a car jack and put it on there with a big old block of wood, that we could just hope the oil pan doesn't break as we put all of the weight of the bike on the oil pan. Not only do I have all of the weight on the oil pan, but I put these ratchet straps down and then we crank those down so it adds even more weight to that oil pan. Um, when you're lifting the bike, if you have the same Harbor Freight bike lift, let me turn the camera around, hold on. There we go, that's better. If you have this Harbor Freight lift, um, one idea I thought of is put the bike in backwards so the back tire would be held into the tire clamp. And then you could hook up these straps here on the back. One of the problems that I always come up with when I'm doing this this way, of course, I didn't do that. I thought that was too much work, so... That's just something if you want to advice an easier way, safer way, that's probably it. The way I do it usually is I take out that little stop, wheel stop there. And then I'll loosen these up here and loosen that up there so the bike feels like it's going to fall over. And then I put the car jack stand or jack underneath it with the block of wood. And then you got to throw a ratchet strap somewhere in the back. The farther back, the better, because the back can be down, but you want the front up. And the problem that happens is as you lift this, it tightens the crap out of those guys. So you gotta constantly be loosening these, and loosen this guy, and loosen that guy. And then you can come back, and, and you can lift up a few inches, and then they get too tight, they wanna break, so you gotta lift, loosen them. When you loosen them, they wanna explode and throw the bike. So it's just a fun little battle that you get to go through for a few minutes. Anyways, I got that battle won, so I got the bike up in the air. Uh, front tire is still touching, so we'll, we'll lift it up a little bit after we get it all unbuckled up in that region and on the other side. And then I'll put the camera back on and show you some more. Okay, so we got the bike super sky high and scary and dangerous. Uh, it just took a little bit of finagling with the ratchet straps. Like always, these two that hold the bike up want to keep the front wheel down, so... Eventually, you just got to get it high enough and loosen those up enough that the back falls under its own weight, and then that front will actually pop up. Now out of there. 
Uh, there is oh the speedometer cable here, and luckily mine has this whoops Phillips that is barely existent at all. Yeah. So we'll have fun taking that out. Jeez. Then we can get the front wheel out. Okay, so in order to get out that speedometer cable, I had to put the clamp back on because if you don't have the clamp on, then the axle will spin, allowing this thing to just move around in a circle. I also had to put the wheel back down so I could put the clamp back on. So I essentially just undid the last 12 steps. All because this guy, which is really hard to see, is just a piece of crap. That's all he is. That's all he'll ever be. So what we'll do is we'll use the impact screwdriver. Hey, I remembered what it was called that time. Um, it's got some weird thing where you hit it with a hammer and I don't understand how it works, but it like sinks and spins and magically coerces these guys to come out. So anyways, we'll have to replace this screw. And after we get this guy all undone, then we'll just redo everything again. Okay, I've got the front wheel off. Um, as you can see, the axle, which is called the spindle in the manual, uh, protrudes pretty far on both sides, so you can't really lay this down to do the tire. So that guy's gonna have to come out. If you look, this boxed in section here, I think is a 24 millimeter. Yeah, that feels like 24 millimeters worth of meat. That's gotta be uh, unthreaded. And luckily they gave you a little tiny hole here for a small Phillips to go through or something. That'll never happen. So what we'll probably have to do is hook this up in the vise or something or get one of my kids out here to hold one side. And once you take this off, this is the threaded portion that'll back off. There's a spacer there, you take those guys out. And then the whole spindle, as they call it, will all just come out. Um, if you're gonna do this at home, uh, make sure you undo the speedometer cable first. That was the mistake I encountered. Uh, nothing like that feeling of getting everything almost undone and realizing there's one more step and having to put it all back together. Live and learn, right? So now we know. Speedometer cable will go on last because when you take it off, it goes come, should have come off first. So we'll see if we can get that up in the Harbor Freight vise. Maybe clamp it on to the hexed side. And get a Phillips screwdriver we don't care about and probably end up breaking it, sticking it through that thing. Why won't you focus? There you are. All right, so this is what I came up with. We got the vise. He's holding on to that hex bolt. And now we can come up here, our screwdriver. And let's see. Let's see if I can get this. Oh, it's gonna balance. Okay, so we got a Phillips in here. Oh, good golly, Miss Molly. You look like a hog. So. Now we got that broke, we can take all that crap out. Once we get the spindle taken out, which is really just an axle, once we get that guy out, we can take him out in the sun and we'll let this sit for a little bit. This is actually not a bad tire, so I might actually, no, I probably can't keep it on, but it should come off easier than the rear. And so I'll get back to you in a sec. So after you get all this crap taken out, a good thing to do is to put it all back together outside of the wheel. So I got that speedometer thing still on there. I put this little sleeve, I don't know what that's called, spacer, who knows. And then I even put the, the nut thing back on, which sits kind of weird. So that way when I put it back together, maybe it's going to be a few days. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe I break a hand and it takes a month. Who knows? Shit happens. Anyways. When I get back to it, I'll know by looking at this. Oh, that's how that thing went back together. So, good idea before you put these things all back together though, is clean up all that old grease. 
it gets dusty and dirty around there. And, but you can't clean that inside out. I'm pretty sure they're all sealed bearings again. But what you can do is you can use a rag and wipe it out. Just don't use solvents. And then pack a bunch of grease, wheel bearing grease back in. Clean that thing off, that spindle. And then clean that off and uh, re-grease it before it goes back in. Sorry, I just said clean that off twice, didn't I? Oh well. Some gasoline. And... Scrub a dub. See, it's starting to come back a little bit. Basically, just gotta keep painting this gas on everything until it's clean. There's a little close up so you can see how well this works. We got some crap on there. Come in here with that paintbrush. Oh, oh, oh. Like brand new. So I got the tire nice and hot. It's a super hot day today. So, oh man, that's almost too hot to touch. So we'll get our tire, wheel, whatever toolkit. Soak the crap out of this one and hopefully this one won't be rusted to the, to the wheel like the last one. And I gotta get to it real quick before it cools down and gets hard again. So I'll, I mean, bust off the bead off the first one, and then I'll try and show you some of it or something along the way. So this one ends up being a lot easier. I basically just popped out one little section, and with the other tool, it's just gonna let me just do this. So, oh my goodness, this is freaking a million times easier than the last tire. So we do that, bing, bang, boom. We gotta get this valve stem 12 mil nut off. Pop that guy through, lift it up, and get the, get the tube out. I'll probably start the tube right here, show you what I'm talking about. It's just hiding in there. Get out of there. Ah. So, we gotta undo that valve stem real quick. That's usually a 12 mil. I don't know if that's universal on everything or if that's just because I only do this on Japanese shit. Stuff, I mean. So, phew. Well, that went by pretty fast. I think that took three minutes to get the tire off. Um, oh. It's actually in pretty decent shape, and normally I might run this for a little longer if I was keeping the bike. But just because I wanted to sell it, I wanted them to have the fa fanciness of the matching tires on the front and back. And it did have those cracks in it. So the wheel is looking pretty good. Oh, which is probably why it only took me like a couple minutes to get the tire off. If you look, this has no rust here where the bead sits. And man, that makes it super easy to just put some soapy water and slip that guy right off. So next thing we gotta do is we gotta take off the tire strap. Let's see if I can turn the camera around. There we go, that's a little better now, huh? So let me put you up where I'm looking. So I would take this off and what this does is this protects the tube from maybe getting metal burrs from these guys when it gets rusty in there. They'll all want to pop that tube, so that little strap there is protecting them from that. And these are only found on wheels that have spokes. And if you haven't put it together, same with the tubes. Tubes are really only on things with spokes. But a 1981 Kawasaki KZ440 has a mag wheel, and the shop manual does say you have to use a tube on that, so I don't know what that's about. But in general, 
a good rule of thumb is if they got spokes, you have to have the tube. And if it's a mag wheel, the kind with the metal instead of this, you know, the little triangle shapes, then they're not going to leak, I guess. So they don't use the, the tube. Uh, the new tire we got right here. This is going to be a front version of what I just ran on the back one. Uh, looks like, let's see if we can get some stuff here without showing my address and all my stalker information. Here we go. Dunlop Gold Seal K70. And the size, oh, where we got the size? I hit it underneath that thing, didn't they? Here we go. Ooh, hello camera. It looks like a three and a quarter inch on a 19 inch hoop with, I don't know, four PRs of 54 Ps. Whatever the heck that means. So this was uh, about the size that everybody in the forums are all recommending. And I like that it's got the old kind of British, I don't know, knobs. It's kind of old school. But it looks like it might run in the dirt all right. Some hard pack. And whilst running well on the street. So we got this mostly cleaned up. Uh, used the paintbrush gasoline trick. So it looks like he ate some of the cardboard box he's sitting on. He's hungry. And if we look, it's actually in pretty decent shape. So I'm probably going to run a Scotch Brite or a Steel Wool, like Triple Ot Zero or whatever the heck it's called. And I'll clean it up, and that's it. And then I'll put the new, new tire on. The new tire I'm going to go throw out in the sun right now so it gets nice and softer. We got our wheel strap thingy and that says same as the back one but it's oh you know what the back one was an 18 slash 19 inch so these are the same since this is a 19 inch and the back is an 18 i guess they fit for both applications uh the tube tube guy here tuber i don't remember what brand it was but the sizing if you can turn it upside down with your brains is 100 with a 90 profile, 90% on a 19 inch rim. I have no idea why it says MC, oh, motorcycle, huh? Yeah, we're learning. Unfortunately, once again, I got the super duper heavy duty three mil thick ones. And let's just hope that that goes on mm, without a pinch. So before we go any farther, I just wanted to share this moment of beauty with you. Very rarely do I get anything that looks this nice in my garage. Look what it says there. Made in Taiwan. I don't even know what that means. I don't speak Chinese. But look at those beauties. I recognize some sexiness when I see it. And this is a sexy piece of metal. All I used was that guy there. I just rubbed it gently. And man, I don't really see wheels this nice in my garage normally. So this is a thing of beauty that I thought maybe somebody else out there might enjoy. Is this the original wheel? I don't freaking know. It looks like it was just picked up at Walmart like last year. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Even the outside. I haven't even cleaned it, but you can tell it's going to shine like my freaking hiney yeah all right so we got the tire outside cooking it's only been like five minutes everything's going so fast compared to the back i don't really know what to do i kind of thought this was going to take all day like the last one or two days but yeah so i thought i'd tell you a little bit more about the bike with the new back tire uh I've got a lot of different things I found off of the interwebs that are going to help me make this thing look nice again. I got the little back hoop doodad that holds the lights. And then I got the fender. Actually, it's more like this. They are big things. They're actually stored right over here. This is my new parts area. I found an original, well, I don't know if it's original. The person told me it was, but I'll have to check it out handlebar and I shined her up and then there's oh treasure 
I polished that all up. I also clear coated and put some orange candy on the lenses and rewired the whole thing. Uh, I got a bunch of new stuff. There's the some exhaust wrap. I got some brand new foot peg rubbers that I just found in my garage. I don't even know where these came from. But I got something in there, I can't remember, but it's supposed to be being protected from dust and from my fingers and stuff. I also got this. I'm not supposed to show you this yet though. This is the tank that I painted for the, the project, but I haven't done the actual paint video. So my plan was to do a little video on painting it, but I went ahead and just painted it. And so we'll just act like you didn't see that. And then when I make the video, you can all act surprised. I noticed that you were checking this thing out and wondering what this was with the sparkly forks. Yeah, I metal flake the forks on things sometimes. This is my Harley Davidson. This is my, basically like the prettiest thing I've ever owned on two wheels. And this was a bike that I got from a friend of mine for cheap. It's a 2002 Sportster 883, I believe. And I went through it and just did kind of what I wanted. You know, I put the built well stuff on, handlebars and seats. I got my little, I don't know what you call that. I don't think I can say what I was going to call it on the interwebs. Anywho. Yep, I got stock pipes on there. I don't give a crap. I want the thing to run nice and have happy valves forever. The bike's actually only got 4,000 miles. I don't know why I'm showing you this. The speedometer won't show or the odometer won't even show until I turn the key on. So just imagine the number 4,000 something something. We got these nice vans thingamajiggers um we got some fanciness right here some led lights we also removed the hole there with the tail light and put our tail lights in these little led deals oh i hear a neighbor coming by having some harley time right now what do we got oh yeah harley time harley hog so yeah, mainly the thing I did on this was paint. And then everything else is just both on this and that. Um, I like to paint. That's like my favorite thing. That's ultimately what I'm doing this bike for and every bike I have around. It's just so I can do this. Not this, but something similar. Um, there's not a lot of people that do the metal flake paint jobs. And I was born in the 70s and this was pretty hot when I was a little kid. I remember everything had that sparkle in it when I was a kid. Little sun visors, toys, everything. So anyways, that has nothing to do with my bike. I just wasted two minutes and 19 seconds of your time. Let's get back on track, shall we? All right, so I had to turn on the big fan, so there's a lot of extra residual noise, but you'll get used to it. So I got the tire out of the sun, it was super hot. I didn't want to put the camera on. I just came in, threw some soap on, and pressed it, and it just popped over the, the rim there, the bead that is, popped over the rim on the other side, obviously. So I went ahead and I got the hardest part of the tube done, which is the valve stem. Don't ever buy the heavy duty one if you don't go off-roading. This was a dumb idea. That took me about 10 minutes of shoving my fingers and ripping all the hair off my knuckles up against that rubber but I got it finally the most important thing is once it peeks through get that freaking nut started on there because if that goes back through you have to start all over with that tube job and then you just got to kind of take your time shimmy it all the way around and then don't forget before you put that bead on you got to go and get your airline and pump like a pound of air in just to get that thing so it's not flat but it gets that round shape and Ever since I learned that trick, I haven't popped any tubes. Fingers crossed. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip off the rest of my knuckle hair on this rubber and get that thing shoved in, fill it up, and then I'll turn the camera back on and show you guys where I'm at by then. All right, so I got the tube shoved in there. I ended up just soaping the crap out of all of that. And then the tube went in. Um, for some reason, that tube wasn't coated with that powder stuff. It's normally coated with that kind of 
inhibits the friction. So it was putting too much of a fight, put some soapy water. It was super easy after that. I wanted to show you guys what I'm talking about with this. Holy moly, let's see if I can set this. No, I can't. Holy moly. Oh, goodness. Oh, this. Okay, let me try something different. Hold on. So what I got here is we got the tube shoved in. And I'm trying to show you that it's, it's inflated. But if you look, it's not really that hard. What I did is I filled it up to six pounds. And that causes all the knots to pop open and get a nice round shape. It also helps that valve stem seat in the right place because sometimes it's like at an angle and as it fills up you can yank this out and tighten this up and get it good to go and then I opened up the valve stem you know took the valve out whatever the needles called and let almost all the air out so now when I come in here and my tool goes in it's just gonna slip right off of that it's not gonna be as, as inclined to pinch it as it was when it was all folded up like that so anyways, that's a good trick if you've never heard that. A man smarter than myself taught it to me. Okay, so next up, we're just gonna pop the bead on the outside. Uh, we gotta make sure we put some soap all on the outside first. And then we take our handy dandy tools and I forget each time how it goes, but I am pretty sure it was something like pull that bead up, shove it over the lip pop, and drop them in there slide them all the way around usually these new tires are a lot easier so do that real quick and then I'll turn the camera back on all right so I probably told you wrong about the tool so I thought maybe it'd be good to show you I come at it with the big one and then this is where the pinch might happen right there you don't want any tube up against that wheel see we got the tube clear so I'll come over here press him down I'll probably shove another tool in there to hold his place and then he goes a little farther you shove him down a little farther a little farther as you're going step on the parts that are already under for example once I get that part and that part I'll put my feet there to hold it otherwise it'll just pop out use your feet and then just kind of work your way around when you get to the end just use a lot of soap and it should just pop right over okay so I'm kind of in a precarious situation here but I thought I'd show you it's worth learning this stuff i got it all the way around we're up to the last little bit i got a foot holding it here i got a tool held down my other foot here got my smallest one now this is the part where i could pump a tire so don't put make sure you don't put too much meat in there and grab the tube and then just ah! and there you go Oh, goodness. My back loves that feeling. Isn't it yours? Anyways, let's go through. Bumping, bumping, bumping. See how they all sound good? Come over to this side. They almost all sounded the same, too. Well, for those of you watching this video, make sure you do that before you put the wheel on, or the tire on the wheel. Because I probably could have turned that a tiny bit. Thank goodness none of them are dead, or I'd have to take the freaking tire all the way back off. Oh. So anyways, it's all done now. She's a beaut. What we're going to do now is fill it up to maybe like five pounds, and then bounce it a bunch. Make sure that bead pops out and gets evenly distributed the way it's supposed to. Because when you're putting it on with the tools, a lot of times if soap dries up in one area, it'll booger up and not come all the way back out. So while the soap's still wet, go bounce it a bunch, fill it up, bounce it a bunch, fill it up, and then crank it all the way up to like 35 or 40 even. And sometimes you'll hear those pops, so don't put your finger there. And then by the time you got it popped and everything, you put it back down to 34 or wherever you run your stuff. So there's the new tire all mounted. Looks nice. Still gotta clean the rim though. It's got soap all over it. And uh, before we put the tire on, we to clean up all this crap off of here because it's hard to reach when the tire is on there. So 
So I'll clean all that up, especially this junk right here. And then we'll put it all back together. Okay, we got that all pretty much cleaned up. It's a lot better than it was. I thought I'd show you how stable we had this thing. Yeah. Anyways, it held. So if you guys come up with a better idea, let me know. Because when it comes to taking off the front wheel, I never tend to have the right idea of how to lift it up. So that's how we did it. Car jack, wood block, oil pan, matched straps from Harbor Freight, holding up just fine. All right, so I encountered a little problem. Uh, sorry about the noise, but it's a million degrees out here. So when I put it all back together and I put the <clears throat> axle or spindle as it's called back in and I tightened that nut on that side, I wasn't able to move this anymore. And I had remembered that when I first took it off, this was free spinning. So it turned out that this thing, uh, the little speedometer dilly bobber, was supposed to seat in and it only wanted to sit all the way in one way. So if you put yours back together and you're having the same problem when you torque down your spindle nut that this starts to bind up, then this might not all the way be engaged. Um, I had it all packed full of grease so I couldn't tell but there was uh, a thing with missing pieces that locked in somehow and so I just put it on and off a whole bunch of times and finally this little lip here jumped into that or rather the edge here fell into that lip and so the first few times it was sitting out so uh, that speedometer thing will move even if it's not engaged I thought that because that was moving that that told me it's seated deep enough but it wasn't so if you put yours together and you don't have that problem good for you one more piece of advice is when you have your wheel out don't squeeze your brake lever Wait, is that the clutch? That's the brake. Don't squeeze the brake lever because that'll just end up closing that gap right there. You see, we want that gap there to stay there so that way when we put this guy in, he'll just go right back to his home. So a couple of things I thought were worth sharing for the CB550. It's telling us I don't know what this means, tire pressure solo. Oh, two people, I guess. If you're riding solo, 26 on the front and 28 on the back, PSI. If you got a person riding with you, 36 on the back, PSI. Also, I just wanted to show you that torque wrench on the spindle nut, 47 pound foot. So that's gonna be the nut that's right under there. So you gotta jam a screwdriver through that hole on that side of the spindle or you can do like I do and put that nut side in the vise and then use the screwdriver through there and turn that until your muscles tell you 47. Um, spindle clamp nut, that's what we're doing next and that's not going to be too much, that's 16 and a half basically. So that's these guys right here and all bikes so far that I've seen always say do the, the leading side or the front all the way so you're gonna tighten this guy all the way down then you go back and you tighten that and you do the same on the other you do the front and then the back and the shop manual tells us that we got to use a flat washer first put the split washer over that and then chase it all back up with a nut show too well there you go like that so clean everything up with gasoline first so that way the next guy doesn't have a dirty bike that he's buying from you well that's another job done the tire ended up going on pretty easy good I would like to Thank all the imaginary people that I talk to when I look at this little dot on my phone right here for watching this video. 
I hope this gave you some good insight on what not to do and maybe even what to do. Or maybe you just watched the video because you couldn't stand the sound of my nasally voice. Either one, I'd like to thank you for watching. We got a lot done. We got the front and back tires done so far. We got all the oil leakers all stopped. And just to get you in here real quick, you can see how nice that tire looks. Mm. I don't know about you guys, but fresh black rubber with some shiny wheels. They always make a bike look a lot better. So we got a few more things we got coming up. Maybe I'll do that exhaust wrap I keep talking about. Probably not. That stuff that stuff sucks. You get fiberglass everywhere. Uh all sorts of stuff to do. If we look here, we got we got a dinosaur. It looks like he bit that. I don't know if that's showing up or not. So, thanks for joining me. Don't forget to click here to subscribe and and click here to like. And keep chiseling.